Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gunpowder Beauty YouTube channel. Today, we are bringing you Gun Gals live. I hope everybody is having a wonderful Sunday. And to any of the fathers watching this uh, show tonight, I hope all of you had a wonderful and happy Father's Day. Tonight, we have our uh, Gun Gals one and our main gun gal is out on a um, boat trip. So we are down one gun gal, but we are going to hopefully do a good show. Uh, we have Sweet Pea. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. How's everybody out there in the world? <laughs> And we also have that guy's wife. How are you doing today? It, it's, it's nice to be free and back home finally. Apologize for everyone. It's my fault we're late. Work's been crazy all weekend. So I, had, I didn't get away too late. I mean, I just walked through the door. I'm still taking like my earrings and crap like that out. So sorry. It's my fault. So sorry. That is okay. So tonight's topics were kind of a little last minute, but thankfully Sweet Pea had my back and we are going to talk about the home security and defense. Um, for a lot of people, it could be a security system. It could be um, you have really awesome dogs that bark. Uh, surveillance, alarms, miscellaneous, stuff like that. Uh, Sweet Pea, what do you use for home security? Uh, we have staged guns in the house. Um, we have one that's by the bed that's, you know, it's got the mag in it, but it doesn't have, it's not chambered, but like two feet from it is another gun that is that has a bullet in the chamber. And then I have mine that's on the doorknob that's in my purse, that's very accessible. And we have our little uh, yapper dog that will bark if anybody knocks on the door. That's, that's actually a really good idea. I know a lot of people out there um, for anybody who is a dog person, you will definitely understand how great it is to have a dog because they, they do have a different type of bark when it's someone that they don't know to someone's outside or, you know, if you've got like yappy dogs, like I had, she would bark at the wind or a squirrel or anything like that. But dogs have a different tone for different things. And so being a dog owner, you definitely start picking up on, you know, what's just a random bark to what is a possible threat outside. Um, that guy's wife, which kind of uh, home security do you use? Um, we have a yappy dog. We have a little ankle biter, but you would think she's a really big deal. And so, um, I also have one of the, one of the best security systems ever. I have, um, what is he? He's a, um, a leprechaun. I have a leprechaun that protects our house. So that's pretty awesome. That's okay. You can all be jealous. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, we have a gnome. That's like how how would I put that? He's 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 carrying, but visibly carrying. So, yeah. So a, a tactical gnome is guarding your house. There you go. <laughs> It's been a crazy week. I don't know that my brain is fully functioning. So if I sound a little loopy, it's just, it, it's been a long weekend. It's okay. I totally understand. It, it's been a long week for a lot of people. 
We we do have um we do have guns throughout the house also. So um I mean, yeah. That's how we are. We've got guns throughout the house. Um we moved in with my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law and so they have two big dogs um, I know one's like part Rottweiler and something um, but they they're more of like just big babies but they do have a bark that if you didn't know the dogs you'd definitely be intimidated by them um, it's it's really nice just being able to sit there and have those dogs here um and the way that the house is it's nice how it's set up because you don't have like a huge open floor plan where there's no place to creep around a corner or something um let's see I'm trying to get back to the chat everybody i'm sorry I'm marking off of my phone tonight, so bear with me. You're fine. One of the things that I had when I was thinking about these ideas is, you know, how do you secure your home too when you go on vacation? You know, we have our, our normal thing that we would do when we're out there, but how do we present our house? So like, is our house the same way when we're here? Do you have your lights on a, on a timers and that kind of thing? Is it noticeable that you're not at home anymore? Um, that's a really good point. I know I'm not quite sure how this house is set up, um, but we did have timers, like for lamps and little things like that. Um, it's a little plug-in that goes into the wall and you can put it to where it comes on. I think there's like two little notches that you can move around in it. And so if you want it to go off at like 5 a.m. or 7 a.m. and you want it to come on at 6 or 7 p.m., you just move the little notches, plug your lamp into it, and the lamp will automatically come on whenever it hits that certain point. Um, that's actually... A really good idea for a lot of people out there. Um, yes. Does anybody actually use the timers on any of their stuff? I don't have time. We we do not either. Um, even at home, I try to. Well, I say I I try to. Um, kind of be a little different as to like my routine. I try to change it up so I'm not exactly the same all the time, you know, as to which light I leave on at what time. So. I, I'm a weird one because I, I love a house that's completely dark. Um, but after having some conversations with some different people it's one of those things of you know your house looks like nobody's home and when i'm home i will i just love the house to be dark um but when we go away that's something that we'll have to start looking into is what we're gonna do for vacation times <laughs> usually we have somebody stay at our house before it would be you know my my parents would be there now we've moved in with my mother-in-law so if we leave they're here um has anybody actually had anybody come over to their house like house sit for them when they're not there or i don't i don't have anybody um house sit i'm a little on the strange side i'm kind of a loner um i don't really ever expect anybody to come to my house so if somebody's knocking on my door that is very out of the ordinary that's why i keep my house pretty much on the dark side 
I'm one of those lucky people who I have a garage and my vehicles are always parked in my garage. So you can never tell if I'm home or not because there, you can't see my vehicles. I have the security lights outside always on. So during the day, there you know, there's those low energy efficient bulbs. They're on all the time. So in the nighttime, they're on. In the day, they're on. So you never tell when I'm home. And I don't have anyone house sit for me. And it's, it's, you can't tell from the outside if I'm home or not. I make it purposely that way. That's pretty cool. We live in the city, so I wish that we had a garage that was big enough so nobody knew if we were home or not. What about you, that guy's wife? We live in the country, and so, no, we don't typically have anyone that house sits or anything. Um, we live, the road we live on is family, and so they kind of make a point to drive through, drive by. I mean, they know what our house looks like all the time, and so they they are able to keep an eye on it for us. But, of course, we do have to have somebody come in and check on our dog so, um, when we're gone, people do come by the house randomly at different times. Um, but nobody that actually just like comes and sits at our house. So. Gotcha. So what measures do y'all actually take other than making it look how you normally do to, uh, lower the risk. I know you're out in the country, that guy's wife, so it makes it really good for you because if somebody's going down your street, people usually know everybody that's down your street. Um, but Sweet Pea, you're in the city. How, how does it help or... I'm not quite sure how I want to say that. Um, um, one of the things that we do, is we watch, um, you know, we keep the door, the garage door closed. So you can't see the stuff that we have in the garage. Um, pretty much always keeping the front door closed, that kind of thing. Trash wise, we don't put it out early. That way weird people can't go through our trash and that kind of thing. Mm hmm if we buy something expensive, like an Xbox or a TV or something like that, we're doing something else with that box than putting it out with our trash, advertising, hey, we got something new, come steal our stuff, whatever, you know? Right. We, we take it somewhere else to dispose of that. Uh, we, birthday parties, Christmases, holidays, whatever it be, we're not throwing all that trash out all at once. To advertise, hey, we got something new break into our house. And, you know, we live in a pretty nice neighborhood, but the last couple of months we've had some situations happen over here. There's been some break ins. There was a home invasion of some sorts that there a little bit of something else going down with that. But, you know, there was kids that were, you know, robbed and stuff like that. They were tied up in their house. The dad was murdered, dropped in another town. A um, couple weeks after that, there was a boy that was friends with my former neighbor's kid. He was actually in his garage and there was an argument and he was shot in the head. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, you think about after hearing things about that, that you, you implement that in your home defense, in your everyday defense. Yeah, I know for us, when it comes to like Christmas, birthdays, or buying something new, usually I, I use the boxes for other things. So, um, whether it's boxing up miscellaneous craft crap or, you know, anything like that. I usually use the boxes. So if it's a game console or even our new, t like a TV box, we ended up 
using it for the kids, we just ripped it open and let them pretty much draw on the inside and ended up cutting it into a bunch of pieces. I'm not sure what we made it into, but it ended up being used as some kind of craft project. Um, with that guy's wife, what what do you do to help prevent people stealing stuff, like when you get boxes and stuff like that? With you being in the country, are you able to, like, burn it or...? Uh, yes, I actually have a metal burn barrel in a part of our on a part of our, on a part of our property, and I actually have I actually have two trash cans that sit in my kitchen. One is for actual trash. The other one is for like boxes. I even I mean I've gotten to where I even do it with you know if you're eating food out of a box or. Anything comes in a box. I mean, for me, that's saving space in my trash bag for my trash can that mm -hmm. I have to take, because I have to take our trash out um, right down the street um, where our trash is picked up. So it's not like picked up at the end of our driveway. So ours is a little different, but yes, you know how you get, um, you get trash mail, you get junk mail mm -hmm. that has your name all over it. Things like that go into my burn barrel. Um, anything that really, just about anything that comes through that has my name on it, if it's not something, because I'm a little OCD, I'm a little weird, if it doesn't go in my filing cabinet within my filing system or within one of my um, boxes where things are neatly stored, it goes through my burn. I burn it. So, Yeah. <laughs> So. That is awesome. Um, I know for us, we we started doing, um, it's kind of like starter paper logs um, for mail that doesn't have like the plastic or that really shiny coating. It can go into a pile for the worms because they eat the shredded paper and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> But it also, you can put it in like a five gallon bucket of water that has holes drilled into it. And you just set it inside another five gallon bucket that doesn't. And it kind of just gets all soft and then you press the water out and it makes a great like kindling log. Um, we started doing those. That would be so cool. Those, they're really awesome. Um, but for the city, we can't burn in our backyard which sucks um but i'm actually going to start doing a lot more of those just for the simple fact that it's a great way to get rid of a lot of that junk mail are you are you able like a small like a small little cardboard box you know like say say what macaroni and cheese or something comes in are you able to break that down and put that in there too yeah anything that's paper um i try not to use the stuff that's shiny for the worms but if it's just going to be a kenneling log it's literally anything that's paper because it's going to soak into water uh -huh. and it's going to break itself down and you can get one of those paint stirrers and stick it on a drill uh -huh. and stick it down into the five gallon bucket and just shred that stuff to pieces once it's soaked for a good bit and then take it out and put the other five gallon bucket on top of the one that has the holes mm -hmm. and it helps weigh down and press all the water out and so for your mail circulars magazines anything that's paper cardboard boxes you can just rip them up and put them in it let them soak and then tear them to shreds and it makes a pretty good fire starter for kindling you could do that and actually burn that disc in, say, my little um, my little Mexican chimney thing, whatever it is. Yes. Oh, see, that's awesome. It's going to burn up real quick, but if you've got, yeah. like, little small pieces of wood that you're yeah. just going to put in there, it's, it's great for that. I, I love it. I learned something new tonight. 
that's cool. And if you have stuff like, you know, how mosquitoes don't like that citronella oil or whatever, you could put that in it and let it dry into it. And so as it's burning and creating a smoke, it's putting that out to help with mosquitoes. That is super cool. I learned, I, I have I learned that off of YouTube. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, I love the paper that's not shiny just because it really does help with worms and stuff like that. And so that helps with growing fruit, vegetables, just plants in general. Um, it makes really good soil and stuff like that. But for the most part, if it's that shiny stuff that I can't feed to the worms, I just put it in a bucket and create disc. Pretty cool. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, in the city that I live in, we actually have uh, recycling bins. But we save that for, like, plastic bottles and miscellaneous stuff like that. And see, I'm really bad because I live in the country. We don't... We don't have a recycle center anywhere near us. The only thing they recycle close to us is aluminum cans. So, if I were to take recycling somewhere, it would be hours away. Or at least an hour away. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's, it's definitely different living out in the country than the city. Here, I... I think there's like five recycling places in a 20 minute drive. But you know, around here, as far as, as far as safety and preventing someone from knowing a lot about you and stuff, I mean, you have to be really careful nowadays because you don't realize it, especially in the cities and stuff. When you drive through, how many people do you see that are going through um, dumpsters. I mean, dumpster diving is a real thing, but there are homeless people that do it too. There are people that, I mean, this is what they do. And so, I mean, they're looking for any kind of information they can find. Yeah. Even in, even in the country, you know, if somebody is taking their trash somewhere or something, I mean, you'll, you'll find a whole bag of trash that's been, that has fallen out of a vehicle and people's, I mean, you would be surprised what kind of information you can find on these, just in random trash. I mean, we had, we found social security numbers and phone numbers and all kinds of crap. Out of the, oh my out, goodness. It yeah. fell out of the back of a truck. See, that's why you wanted our social security address, anything like that. It's destroyed to the fact that you can't find it later. Yeah, that's, I, I love just using the paper shredder first and then putting it in a bucket of water or putting it in a container with a bunch of worms and stuff because there's, but being in the city, if someone was to get in my backyard and look, Here's through that a, container that would be a little dangerous because it takes a couple of weeks for worms to go through all of that right instead of doing that why don't you throw half of it away and the other half you flush it down the toilet mm. uh, because I have a septic tank and then you have to pay them to come clean that stupid thing out no. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't live in the city, so yeah, That's that would so that would crazy. never happen in my house. Okay. Bye. I'm just a bigger fan of sticking it in a five gallon bucket. It it's benefits to having hot heat in Texas is it does not take long for water to dry out of disc. You set up set it up on a grill or something and there's no traces of whatever that was. Because all the ink, it leaks out or it bleeds out, whatever. It's diluted. So you can't even tell what was written there to begin with. Like our circulars, there's so much color on them when they go in. But when they come out, it's just like a dingy gray looking color. 
Now, the the downside to having like a burn barrel like what I use, the downside to that is because we are in Texas. And if it doesn't rain for a little while, we get those wonderful burn bands. Yes. So, that's kind of the downfall of a, like a bonfire or anything like that. You can't burn anything in a burn band, even if you prep your area that you're going to burn, uh-huh. you, you can't do it. You'll get a fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We deal with that at the farm, and it sucks because we have so much that overgrows and needs to be just removed, uh-huh. and we can't do it because of the fact that the whole county or something's in a burn ban. I think you ladies are talking me out of living in the country. It's wonderful living in the country. Like, I, I look forward to the day that we can move out of the city and go to the country. It's okay. It's a dream. Living in the country is an adjustment, especially if you're used to living in town. Okay? It has its ups and its down. It's no different. I mean, it's got it's got ups and downs just like living in the city does. Okay? My neighbors are not, they're in walking distance, but if I stand on my porch and yell, they're not going to hear everything I say or anything I say. See, and that's what I always thought that I wanted. Neighbors that were around, but they weren't close like that. Okay. And for you to say you're a loner, the country is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's like, I've lived in the town I have for about four years, and I can, well, I can actually say I don't have friends here at all. I don't have anybody that's coming over my house. Not that I would want to, because my experience in my life tells me that's not a good idea. Things will go missing. Well... I mean, the towns I've grown up in are have never been big. I mean, I've never lived in like a huge town. If I had to, if I had to live like where Gunpowder lives, I don't think I would survive. I tell myself that every day. But I don't know how I survived. It's some. <laughs> But it's something that you're used to. You're familiar with it. I would eventually get used to it, and I know I would. But just sitting here thinking about how quiet it is here. You know, we we have traffic right in front of our house. and But we have... We have fans. Like, I have three fans in my, li- in my, in my bedroom going right now. On top of the air conditioner. Because it's so quiet... That it's it's crazy quiet. I'm sure crazy quiet is not necessarily something you have to deal with all the time. See, that's why I want to move to the country is for the crazy quiet. Like, I would much rather listen to the crickets, the birds, and, you know, the insects that are making noise than listening to a fire truck or a train or something that is constantly going every single day at crazy hours of the day. Like, if I never heard another fire truck go off at 2 o'clock in the morning, that would be amazing for me. That's a little different for me because I've gone from big city to medium city to somewhere in the middle of all that city. (laughs) The idea of country life is it's, it's, it's a uh, utopia I've pictured in my head. And the nice thing about all that is my mother's moved to a very small, and I mean small, they don't even have their own police officer for their town. And when I go there and I experience that, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but they're... Security there is very different because everyone knows everybody. Nobody does anything 
crazy. And I'm used to people doing things extremely crazy. I balance that, okay? Where I'm at, it's mellow, we're good, things, you know, no big deal. I balance that with where I work. So after I've had a long day or a week or weekend like this weekend, this crazy quiet is absolutely wonderful, amazing, best thing ever. That's true, because instead of having to deal with the crazy all the time, you get to have a place that's kind of like your your sanctuary where mm-hmm. no crazy, no loud noises, no insane people it's just so peace quiet personal space so living in town me talking about just because i i live in the country and i talk about changing up my routine a little bit every now and then just so it's not something that people um people something that people are actually able to notice or whatever but for y'all do y'all change up your routines and things like that? I mean. For me, my routine is never the same. Um, there's a lot of days that I don't have to get out of the house. And there's some days that, you know, I do have to get out of the house. So it looks like nobody's home most of the time because Tardot will take Uh, vehicle to work and then there's days that I do have to get out of the house and I usually just would park around back or something so it still looked like nobody was home unless somebody literally drove around back to see Um, but where we're at now the driveway is in front of the house Um, but it's nice because nobody knows that we're here so (laughs) it's well, see, that's why I don't really change up my routine because even if I did, you couldn't notice. So yeah, because you park inside the garage. Right, and when I'm home, I'm not hanging out outside. I'm. It's hot and humid, but I'm just not an out. How do I say this? I am an outdoorsy person, but I'm not at the same time. If I'm home alone, I'm in the house. The only time I ever really go out is when my husband is is around and we're going like hiking or something like that. But you still can't tell if I'm home or not. So are are there parts of your day? I mean, I I realize for gunpowder, you're saying yours is different like all the time. But in Sweet Pea, yours kind of stays the same. So when you go to work and you come home, are there certain things that you kind of do the same every day as far as your routine? Like you make a point to stop here or here or you have to do this or, you know what I mean? Is there, is there, do you take the same route all the time? Things like that. Kind of, sort of. Um, I work a 10 hour shift. 11 hours with my lunch. I I work from Monday through, or from Wednesday, excuse me, to Saturday. I am out of the house by 7 o'clock. I am back by 7.30. I go the same way, sort of, but right now there's construction, so I've been going more through town than on freeway. And then I come home and I do the same thing. I take a shower. I get into my jammies. And I just hang out at night. On my weekends, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I am doing random stuff. I go to church, hang out with Rob on Sunday because his day off is on Sundays. Mondays and Tuesdays are kind of a touch and go thing because sometimes he gets voluntary time off to where he can actually come home early. Sometimes he doesn't. So it's am I going to my chiropractor or am I staying home? Am I going to the library? It depends. Though those days are the days where my schedule kind of changes and stuff. But you wouldn't be able to tell that ever. Because my the outside of my house never really changes. 
except for those brief moments where the garage door opens and closes, but I mostly ever keep my doors closed. There's the back door that has blinds. I pretty much keep those closed all the time, but my backyard never changes. I have my table that's out there with my little chairs and whatever else, and my little inexpensive, don't steal me kind of grill. Um, but that never really ships. But Rob's schedule is, is, is different. His is kind of like all over the place because of the VTO. Uh -huh. Is he coming home early and stuff like that? Is he mowing the grass and stuff like that? Yeah. It, he's a little bit more active, if you want to say, towards moving around in the house. But still, as far from what he's ever told me, you still can't really tell if he's home or not, unless he's mowing the grass, which he's obsessed with. Cool. So, I mean. It's a free workout and a free tan. I love yard <laughs> work. I, I mean, I, I tend to keep my routine pretty, pretty much the same, but my husband's routine is so odd and all over the place that I like to think that he makes up for my being very routine. So. And here's the thing I didn't think about before. We don't have kids that are running outside all the time. Uh -huh. We have the dog, sure. When we walk her, sure. She's got her little schedule going on. But it's not the same thing as having a young kid running in and out of the house and screaming all over the place like some of our neighbors. Or, you know, you have grandkids and Gunpowder has kids. We don't have that. So there is that silence that's not, that's there from that. After today, can I live vicariously through you? Can I, I, I don't know what it's like to live in a house where there's not screaming and all of that. It's been a crazy weekend. Um, no. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. That, you know, my house, it always sounds like there's somebody here because my kids, if they're left unattended for, you know, five minutes, they're probably trying to dismantle it board by board. Um, or there's somebody throwing a fit because the other one has their toy or, you know, all that craziness. Now, someone, someone earlier in the chat mentioned um, cameras, like security cameras at their house. Do either one of y'all have things like that, especially since you live like in the city? We did at our old house. Um... We had the glass break camera for the sunroom. We had um, the doorbell camera, um, a hallway camera, um, and something else, um, and one for the driveway. Uh, but where we're at now, there's not that kind of security system, but it's actually a more peaceful area. We, we had that because of who our neighbors were at the old house. Um, here, we're not living next to a junkie and her crack-headed friends, so it's, it's kind of nice and peaceful and less chaotic, if that makes any sense. See, I had the opportunity to have cameras, but here's the thing. One, we rent our house. We don't own our house. Two, Rob's done certain things in the past where he's dealt with security cameras, so he's a little bit would go overboard. And with the opportunity that we had, 
to put cameras on was not what he wanted to they didn't do the extent of what he wanted versus having it outside the number of ones that he would have versus having the cameras inside of the house and what they would be able to hold as far as recording and memory and all of that fun stuff was not what he wanted. So we never went after the freebie that we would have had. So we don't have cameras, but it is something that we have talked about in the past of having. We cool. have friends that have cameras, so I've seen how it works. And it would have been more the style of the freebie opportunity we would have had. And I can tell you what, it, it's not all that great. Hmm. And then it comes to the fact, are they hackable? And all of this other, like, I guess more so paranoid ideas that you would have about it come into, mm -hmm. come into mind about it. So... Here, here's a question for you. You know, if you're worried worried about someone um, coming into your house, uh, a burglar or whatever, um, your house wise, do do y'all have special security within your your windows or your doors or things like that? No. We just have the lights that stay on outside. Oh, dumb lights and stuff like that. Dark blinds, dark curtains. We never really open the curtains or the blinds. We never open the windows. Partially because of security, partially because I don't want bugs in my house, but there's that part of it too. I mean, I spray for bugs, but. I mean, I hate spiders. If I see a spider, I'm going to scream for like a million years and the thing will die because I'm not going to kill it. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I terrify the spiders. I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm not going to have to worry about somebody breaking in my house because if I see a spider, I'm probably going to burn the thing down. Exactly. Um, like the spider I, I, I think I'm looking at right now. Oh, uh, no. We, we had a black widow go into our living room at the old house. And I was like, nope, I, I can handle, like, the brown wolf, whatever spider it is. It was way too big to be in my house. And I threatened to burn the house down then. But when I saw a black widow, I was like, I'm about to pour gasoline all over this house and just light it up. See, when I was single and I hadn't, I had a was kind of starting to meet Rob, but I hadn't, you know, gotten that close to him or nothing like that. I was living in this apartment that had this, like, little lake or pond or swamp or whatever you want to call it in the back. So I had these gigantic wolf spiders that would be in my apartment. Let me tell you what, if I've ever experienced hell, it was at that chapter in my life because there would be these spiders all over my apartment. At yeah. Times. Like I'm telling you what, I came home from school one time when I was in college, and the entire door was covered in like four or five different wolf spiders. So the fact that I couldn't open the door to get into my apartment, oh, an experience. I'll tell you what. I, I I don't do well with spiders or scorpions. That's the only thing that worries me about moving to the country because. I just, I, I can't. North. I don't have scorpions. I just have spiders and every other bug in the world. But I don't have lizards and I don't have scorpions. I'll tell you what, though. One time when I was in Texas, I had this memory. I was, I was, we were in my grandfather's house. And um, I went into the bedroom. I don't know how old I was. But I went in the bedroom and there was this gigantic lizard and it was long and it was big and it was on the bed. And I don't know how loud I screamed, but everybody came. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I can handle snakes. I can handle lizards. But I, I, I don't do well with spiders. I've only had one experience with scorpions. 
and I didn't sleep at all the two nights that I was there because I saw one scorpion. Um, but spiders are just the worst. Okay, so since since spiders and creepy crawl, crawly things are like all over the place, what what are your thoughts about like hide keys and things like that? On um, what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, y'all are talking about like bugs and things like that. You know, they hide all over the place. So if you have a hide key that's in a in a hidden place and you kind of have to blindly go for a key what do you think about that but then what is your thought again just specifically on the idea of having a hide key I'm trying to bring us back in you see you see this I'm trying to bring oh, us back yeah. in Oh yeah yes yes okay so at our old house I had a empty pill bottle I just took the prescription tag off of it and I hot glued it or silicone I can't remember but I I attached the lid to the bottom of a rock um, and then dug a hole and so it just looked like a rock right kind of by the door but there was a bunch of other rocks but it was one specific rock um, that's that's as far as I go I don't do like the weird areas that creepy crawly things could go um, it's just because I'm weird like that I my parents had a hide and key when I was young but we don't have one here and it wasn't really all that hidden, I'm going to say. It was just on top of the the rim thing that was on top of the door. I had a room. friend that had some magnetic, um, some kind of like magnetic strip. It's kind of like a tape. And she had put it on the key and it would stick to the back of the mailbox like you had to know exactly where it was on the back of the mailbox because it was attached to the front porch but that's where the hide a key was look my mom had this most horrible habit when i was a kid of either getting locked out of the vehicle or getting locked out of the house her favorite thing was to get locked out of the house so i became an expert in getting into my house when i was a kid I could break into that thing like nobody's business, but it was only one window and one part of the house. Um, and I it was the only time that I ever was like a monkey athletic person. Um, I remember one time she got locked out of the car. I was actually using a coat hanger to open the uh, lock through the little crack that she left, left open. In this I, I've done that. And this cop came up and he was all like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to get into this car because it's our car and the key is right there. You can see it. Oh, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really like the idea of hide a keys. Um, I'm kind of a paranoid person. And so I'm always afraid that if I have a hide a key, someone that's not supposed to find it is going to find it. And... Yeah. Um, you know, be able to get in my house or my car. Like, I had the little magnetic thing that would go under the car above one of the tires, and it would just stick to your car. And I never used it because I was scared with all the bumpy roads that I go down, it would sit there and fall off. See, at this point in my life, I don't even carry my house key with me at all. We go through our garage all the time, so I have my garage door opener. But here's the funny thing about that. is one of the rare times I did carry my house key with me a couple of weeks ago. I came home and our power was out. So with the power being out, obviously the garage door is not going to open. And I'm like, right. what's going on? Like I'm hitting the thing, but the light... The sun was hitting the lamp pulse, which remember when I told you that I keep my lights on all the time? Right. 
So I couldn't tell if it was the light that was on or if it was the sun that was reflecting off the light pulse's lamp. You know, this little cheap thing that we have from, from our landlord. And um, so I was hitting the garage door and it wasn't opening. I'm like, okay, the lights are out. Like I've noticing multiple lights are out. So it was the rare time where I actually had my key with me and I was able to get into the house. This was a good idea. So ever since then, I've like kept my key with me more so than before. So yeah. with, with the doors, because Clover brought up a good point. If someone wants in your house, they're not going to spend time looking for a possible key. They're going to kick the door in. How many people actually use the screws that come in the handles, doorknobs and stuff for your doors? Or who actually takes the time to put in longer screws? Because we, we don't use the screws that come in the packages when you're buying doorknobs and handles and all of that stuff. We always go and get the longer black screws that actually go into the door frame and into the door. So it, it makes it harder for whoever's kicking it in for it to snap open. They actually have to work harder See, we've never really done any adjustments with that because we are in a Yeah. But that is an interesting thought to do later, maybe. Because we are, we are wanting to buy our own house. We just... I don't really know if I want to live in Ohio. I've talked about living in Tennessee for so long that... That's where my focus is if I'm going to buy a house or Texas. One of the two. But I'm Texas gonna... would totally love to have you. I'm just going to throw that out there. I tell you what, I'm going to live in a state that starts with T, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, girl, just come on. Just come on to Texas. We'd love to have you. Like, like Ed Mallory said, just come on. You're already part of the family. Just get a little closer to us, okay? I mean, I probably see. lived in Texas when I was a kid. We spent summers upon summers because that's where my grandparents lived. That's where a lot of my aunts lived and my dad's side. I still have one cousin out there that I talk to on my dad's side. Okay. You know, I, I have a connection to Texas, I promise. <laughs> We, we should all just move to East Texas and be done with the city and just be like, all right, East Texas it is. Okay. I have a, I have a question now, okay? Okay. So, so, like, when our kids were little, we actually had an escape plan. And this was something that the kids actually had to come up with as part of one of their school projects and stuff, too. Um, should anything happen, do you have um, a plan in place as to where you exit your house, where y'all meet up? I know, Gunpowder, your kids are still really little. Um, but do you and your husband kind of have a thought process is it something y'all have discussed not just the idea that you would carry you know that you carry you have a gun accessible or anything but uh, I know we've talked about code words and things like that before but and y'all just moved so is that something that y'all have discussed recently well it's funny because at the old house we we knew if there was a tornado where we would go if there's a fire we knew what we would have to do to get out, uh, depending on where the fire is, is depending on what exits we would take. Um, but in the new place, we we haven't got that far yet. Um, well, if so somebody's... Go ahead. I don't know. Uh, if somebody's breaking in, like at the old house, we we knew where we would go and what we would have to do. But here... If they're breaking in through the front, mm -hmm. um, my our room and the kids' room is on the front, and then the next window is the living room, and so that would be a little bit more difficult because we'd have to pass by the living room 
and the garage is on the front. So this house is a little weird. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely something that we're going to have to look into and get a game plan, whether there's a fire or a tornado or someone breaking in. Cause now that we're in a new place, we need to get a new game plan. Well, I was reading something just a minute ago while we were talking and something that I hadn't really thought of because, you know, living in the country, you're like, you know, there are certain things that you're, you just get familiar with and you get used to and you just kind of take the rest of it for granted. Like, oh, it's okay. No big deal. But because of the way we live or where we live, our house and stuff, our windows within our house, outside of the ones that on our, on our front door, the rest of our windows are, I mean, you would actually have to climb to get into one of our windows. I mean, it's not like a huge window where you could actually like sit in your windowsill or something like that. So, um, it was talking about, you know, cause you leave things outside, you know, people have ladders and things like that. It says to secure those is, I mean, is that something that y'all would have to worry about or anything? Cause I don't know where you live now. I mean, you still live in the city? Like, yes. very much in the city? Unfortunately, yes. We're, we're still in the same city that we were in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just 15 minutes away from the old house. Um, the backyard, thankfully, that one gate is secured. So, you, the only way someone's going to get over the fence is, Maybe if they're really good at climbing or, you know, drag one of the trash cans over it, against the fence and then climb over that way. Um, but that's going to make a lot of noise. Um, as far as ladders, they're all in the garage and it's locked on the outside. So, and it's one of those raised garage doors so it's kind of hard to do that one because it takes a key um but unfortunately all the windows i mean it's behind bushes but they're all level pretty much with a grown adult like you could pretty much break them i don't like them but it's a rent house well, I mean, the whole, the whole point of this is for us to kind of talk about things and, and, and it kind of helps, helps us become more aware of different things that we may not have thought about before. For me, I live in a ranch style brick house. It's two bedrooms. So really independent with the direction of the front door and the garage door, best place to run is the bedroom. I'm going to say the bedroom has the most amount of guns and stuff like that. If somebody were breaking in or something like that was going on, it'd be the safest room to be in. I'm going to tell you that. Um, I saw something in the chat as far as somebody saying, check your local sex offender registry. We did get a letter in the mail maybe less than a year ago of a sex offender being moved into our neighborhood. So they do a good job of letting us know of who's around us. Um, so there is that safety that you do take as you are in your home and you go outside of your home, even if you're just, you know, walking your dog or whatever. Um, and there's been some really crazy stuff that's happened in the neighborhood as far as vandalizing people, putting stuff on other people's vehicles that would, you wouldn't know that there's something not right that happened on there. I should have taken pictures. I could have posted it here. But anyways, there's, there is that. The local sheriff's department lets you know. When it comes to sex offenders, um, I use an app, um, the three, I want to say it's a 360 app. Um, it, 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 I pretty much check it, uh, the week before Halloween, 
to know which houses we we want to kind of avoid. Um, but that's pretty much it. I don't I don't check it on a regular basis just because we go to a park now where we live because it's a walking distance before I'd have to drive to one. Um, and I didn't want to take my kids across a main street to get to a park. Um, but anyone who lives in the city, it's especially anyone who has kids, it's kind of a terrifying thing to sit there and look up your sexual predators in the area because the last time I checked, last Halloween, we had over 6,000 in a five mile radius of the house we lived in. Wow. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. I mean, wow. That's <laughs> that's why I want to move to the country. My sister, she lives in a small town, and I think where she lives, there's like fifteen. And she was like, "Oh, that's a lot." I'm like, <laughs> "No, that's not a lot." Come to my house. That's that's a lot. Where we're at now, I haven't even looked, but I probably should. But at the same time, I'm a little worried that it's going to be an outrageous number. Okay. In the last three years, there's been like three different home invasions. Um, down the street, a couple of houses down from that, a lady was, her home was home and raided. She was tied up. They stole all her stuff, whatever else. There was the, and I've talked about this before, but there was. Um, down the street, a little ways down the main road, there was a guy, he was, he disappeared for like two days, and his kid and his friend were tied up. They found his body some in the woods, a couple of towns from where I am at. Um, there was an old lady, she was burned, or she suffocated. The house was on fire, basically, is what happened. And they were able to revive the dog, but they weren't were able to revive her, which is super sad. Um, there's been like multiple different weird things that's happened in my neighborhood for the last couple of months. It's just like, put your guard on a little bit more. Yeah, the neighborhood I lived in before we moved here. Um, across the main street, there's another neighborhood and there was an elderly woman that her house was broken into during the day and the guy raped her and pretty much torched her in her house. And you wouldn't think that that kind of stuff would happen, especially during the day and right across the street from a fire station. Um, but there's, there's sick people everywhere. And even if we're home, our door is always locked. Um, we make sure our cars are always locked. Um, it just, it really makes you take a step back and think about, you know, your surroundings, who your neighbors are, what's going on, and all of that. Because there would be times I would be getting up to go crank the car in the morning and before I walk out the house I make sure that you know there's nobody just hanging around outside and you you never know so you said before you can't you don't have a garage to park in for your car. yeah the garage we have a garage um but the way that the garage is set up, it can fit like a small compact car, but it's not going to fit like an SUV. 
What about you, that guy's wife? What about me now? Do you have a garage so you can park the car in and stuff like that, or are you pretty much parking on your driveway? Um, we park on our driveway. We it's it's red dirt. We have red clay. So no. We we are nothing fancy. We are in the country. So um I was looking this up as y'all were talking. For Cherokee County, which is not that big, um, but we have 119 registered sex offenders. And that's for the whole county. That's not just for, but our county is probably, probably the entire size of Dallas, maybe, if okay. that. I would say it's, it's not big. Yeah, because you live in the country, so it's a little bit different. So right. one of the things that I was thinking about, because this was a story that was told to me that made me value the fact that I do have a garage to park in. One of my coworkers, she doesn't really have a garage. You know, we live in the city and stuff like that, that she could park in. Her, she had some situation where her kid went into her vehicle while after she had parked and locked up her car and stuff like that, where the kid went out for something and didn't lock the car back up. Now, during the night while they were asleep and whatever, the car was broken. Into. Her stuff was stolen from her work, you know, all of her notes and stuff like that from class because she was a newly hired person. She had all of her new notes and stuff like that, but also her son's gaming system. I'm not really sure if it was an Xbox or one of the Nintendo DSs or something like that. I just remember her saying that it was very expensive, was also stolen from the car along with some other personal information. And that made me start really thinking about, okay, when you do park in your driveway, what are you leaving in your vehicle? You know, and are you making sure at all times that it is locked and stuff like that? So that's what brought on that thought for me. Well, even living in the country, I still lock my vehicle. If I'm not in it, it's nine times out of ten, when you go out there, you're not going to be able to get into it. Because my husband will go looking for something and he'll get mad because he's got to come back in and get my key. But it sucks to be him. He's just going to have to walk back in and get my key. Because, yeah, I'm still going to lock it. So, anyway. It's better to be safe than sorry. Definitely. Definitely. So, it is what it is. So, I'm going to tell you all. I, I googled the county that I live in. And there's 4,046 registered sex offenders as of today. Wow. Wow. It's insane. That is insane. And that's registered. That's not including the ones that haven't registered. Mm. There's an app. It it tells you those that have gone to court. They haven't, they didn't have to sit there and register as one. They went to court for it. And it's, it's an amazing app. I think it's Life360. Well, I go to work and, and there's a whole bunch of them that I work with, so. I've just checked my area and my area has 35 registered. Wow. So. I have got to move. <laughs> That's just all there is. I've got to move. Anyway. Okay, um, I hate to run, but I'm exhausted, and I really want to just, I really just want to go to bed. I know that sounds really awful, but it's... No, we are past the hour mark, 
it's um, been a long weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I think I'm a little bit on the drunk side, so I think I should stop. <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Is there anything that y'all would like to plug before we end the show? Oh, I'm just yawning. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> just, um, yeah, no, just thank you for letting, letting me be a part of it. I apologize again, guys. It's my fault we were late tonight. Um, they wanted to wait on me and I didn't get off till late. So I am so sorry. Otherwise, check me out on uh, YouTube or on Instagram, that guy's wife. Um, and y'all have a great uh, end of the weekend. And for all of you out there that are fathers, happy Father's Day. I hope y'all had a great day. And thank you, Gunpowder. Thank you for joining us, and we love waiting for you because it wouldn't have been the same without you. Aw, thank you. Sweet Pea, do you have anything? Thank you so much for running with some of my ideas that I've had for a little bit tonight. Um, I'm sorry if it was a little bit on the awkward side. I had so many ideas just bouncing around in my head about what we could do with home security and personal security. With that, um, subscribe to me if you want to on Sweet PC. I'm also on Instagram as Wifey Cromwell. Um, I, I've really enjoyed talking with all of you tonight, and I hope all of you have a great week. Absolutely, and thank you for giving me ideas. It's been really crazy with the whole move and everything and I'm, I'm still trying to pack up stuff so I appreciate all the help it has been wonderful and these were some great topics I know we kind of got off topic a couple of times but it wouldn't be a show if we didn't get off topic at least once or twice um, thank you everyone who joined us tonight uh, you can um, catch me on YouTube Twitter Instagram Facebook. Um, I think we're going to have the show next week on this channel again. And then after that, our Gun Gal show will return to its original time and channel. Um, I'm totally having a blank out moment. Uh, let's see. Yeah, totally blanking out now. Okay, brain is officially shutting down. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope you'll have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and I hope you'll have a great week. Um, everybody take care, and we will see you on the next show. Good night, everybody. Oh.